for joining me on this Saturday morning to do yoga with Mona and me. Uh, she's very excited, but she's also been displaced. Usually she likes this couch to hang out on, which is usually covered with her stuff. And for the video, I cleaned it out and she is very unhappy. But hopefully she'll join us for some exercise and not be a couch potato. So I hope you all have been practicing everything that we have been doing for several months now. And what you can easily do is always shut your eyes and take three deep breaths and calm your nervous system down, your cardiovascular system down and just uh, be present. So V and Sally asked me this morning, what do we need for this session today? And I said, you just need your own presence of mind, your ears, your eyes, and your love um, to all of us. Um, because even though we are on Zoom, we are still connected to each other. And this is a great way for me to reach out to you and um, practice with you. It's a real privilege to be part of this whole system through the COVID and uh, being able to bring some health and wellness into your life and into my life too. So today I was going to um, do the Himalayan uh, sound bowls and do some um, sound meditation with you. So what you will need to do is just lower your eyes and then just listen to the bowls um, the singing bowls they are called and um, just focus on that and your breathing and try to if thoughts come to your mind just take it back to the music and just listen to every chord that's played um, you can do this at home as well uh, these bowls are easily available on eBay uh, and you can order them and or Amazon and you will get them. I got these from Nepal. Um, so, you know, feel free to invest in your own peace of mind. So without further ado, I am going to get onto the floor from the chair and to make to play the music. While you are going to. Dr. Hatul, can you please um, just raise the sound a little? We had a question about that. Okay. Maybe you can try to make it a little louder. Thank you so much. I think that they will hear plenty soon enough. Okay. Now you can shut your eyes and take. Just breathe normally.
everyone. You can now slowly open your eyes and I hope the music permeated all your cells of the body and you were able to relax your mind as you listen to uh, these singing bowls. They are very relaxing. They have been used in uh, Buddhist temples for thousands of years and um, the monks use this and also chant uh, which is also a very relaxing uh, part of the exercise. I was um, at a monastery uh, in Japan two years ago in a Buddhist monastery and it was a, an amazing experience so I hope um, that it brought some peace and quiet in your heart and mind. So I'm going to migrate back to the chair. I used blocks to sit on um, and you could use these. A lot of people have difficulty sitting on the ground so you can use blocks. You can also use blocks to kind of put them under your feet if you if your chair is not appropriate and you're not getting this beautiful 90 degree angle that um, is important while sitting um, and so your muscles are relaxed. Uh, our body is very geometric and so uh, the more angles we create and we keep in mind that you know we are erect and our shoulders are perpendicular to our axial system um, you're going to have um, more you can you, you can think of geometry in your body in your brain and try to uh, conform to that we don't have as many if we are circular for example when I hunch down you're going to have more problems with your muscles your joints but if you're erect and you kind of think about these things you're going to have more flexibility and better posture and better posture is going to help your overall muscular skeletal system okay so i have my feet on the blocks and my hands can be comfortably resting or they can be in this kind of a mudra where my right hand is on top of my left hand or vice versa and my thumbs are connected so in this way we will take three deep breaths Let it out. Another one. And let out the air from your mouth. And this will release all any tension you have in your chest. Extra, you will just breathe it out. So three deep breaths will clean your system to start afresh. Now, as we... I think the folks last month had requested that they would like some core exercises. So I will weave that into our practice today. But as always, we will start with our head and neck, very important parts of our body. And we're going to rotate because that's what our spine does. And so I'm going to turn to the right to look at Mona. And then I'm going to bring it back to center and then hopefully she complies and goes to the left. And yes, she did. And so, ah, uh, no, Mona, do not jump on the couch. And then I'm going to look up and then bring it to the center and down. And you can coordinate this with breathing. Turning to the right, breathe out, breathe in, bring it to center. Turn it to the left, breathe out, bring it into the center, breathe in, pick it up, breathe out, bring it to the center, breathe in, and then breathe out, bring it lower. Let's do it one more time. Bring it to the center, breathe in, breathe out as you turn to the right, breathe in, bring it to the center, Breathe out as you turn to the left. Breathe in, bring it to center. Pick it up as far back as you can and then without hurting your neck and then bring it down and bring it to the 
center. Now we are going to look diagonally and with our neck, breathing, and then bringing it to center. And we're going to take it diagonally and then we're going to bring it back. And we're going to take it diagonally again to the left, bring it to the center, diagonally to the right, bring it to the center. One more time to the left, bring it back and to the right, bring it back. So in this way, we have rotated our spine nicely on our head. Now we're going to give a nice stretch to our neck muscles by using our right hand. We will hold on to the left side of our head. We will use our left hand to hold on to the chair and give a nice stretch to our sternocleidomastoid and our staline muscles. They are our neck muscles. Take a lot of tension all the time. And feel so good breathing in and out. And if you fall on the chair, you can get an even deeper stretch and use your hand as much as you want or as little as you want to create that stretch on these neck muscles. Now we're going to do the same thing with our left hand to the right side and stretch our right sternocleidomastoid and scalene muscles. Give a deep stretch. Breathing. Breathing always helps to remove the toxins in our muscles. So always breathe and drink lots of water after your practice. So in this way, our head and neck muscles have been stretched. And you can do a massage with your fingers to your scalp and your face muscles. Give some love to your face muscles. This also makes your cheeks sweat without rouge. And you can just massage your neck within this motion. And so you will reduce your wrinkles. You don't have any wrinkles, but if you had, just push it down. And also when you are doing meditation, consciously relax your, um, your forehead muscles. We tend to always like raise our eyebrows with everything and that creates these creases in like three of them in our forehead and just by not doing that and also not scrunching our uh, eyebrows to bring it in the middle we create two or three lines here so during meditation consciously relax this muscle on the forehead and you will see your wrinkles reduce your also your wrinkles on the sides of your eye um, I have never used any Botox or anything um, and I usually just do meditation and acupuncture to help me relax my muscles. It's also, um, you know, conscious relaxation helps these muscles. So just another tip for you. Now moving on to our next body part, which is our shoulders. We are going to warm them up. They are, they are the most difficult um, joints, in my opinion, to treat with physical therapy. So protect your shoulders always. They are the kind of, they have a lot of mobility and because of that, they have less stability. So how can you improve your flexibility and mobility, but also prevent your shoulders from getting injured? Some simple things for women is, you don't know, use heavy um, bags or pocketbooks on one shoulder, try to move it on the other shoulder sometimes. And if you can use a backpack that's not too heavy, light, um, and also keeps your posture straight, would be better for your shoulders than using a handbag. So let's move our shoulders, moving back and forward, back and forward of the right arm. And you can breathe as you do it, inhaling and exhaling. Doing it as slowly as you can, really feeling your joints and getting your body, you know, your mind-body connection. 
Now you will move it in the opposite direction. So if you are moving it back to front, move it forward and backwards. And let's do this a few times to wake up our shoulder joint in a very gentle way. We are much more stiff in the mornings than we are in the evenings. Our muscles have had chance to relax um, too much in the night and then they become stiff. And if it's cold like this morning, I see a little flurries in my garden and new daffodils are beginning to pop up, giving me hope for better times ahead when we can have our yoga from my backyard. Mona would like that too, because then she won't be so restricted. And now we're moving it forward and back, my left shoulder, and it's warming up. And then I'm just gonna do a little hokey pokey and get my shoulder joints all um, loosey goosey and just, you know, feel good, okay? You gotta feel good in your body. So if you feel pain, you know you need attention. So if you're doing something and it's causing you pain, it can be stiff, but shouldn't be causing you pain in any movement, then you need a physical uh, and some assessment, okay? So now we are going to take our right arm and move it out, and then we're gonna move it towards. So I can move it all the way to the other side, to the left side. Okay, but then I hike up my shoulder a little bit. I don't want to do that. I want to keep the same alignment. So I'm just going to take it as far as I can keep alignment. Okay, and I can't do much more because right now I'm stiff as well. This is the morning time. Usually I can go all the way up here, but today I'm stiff. So I'm just going to do as much as I can. And I'm going to slowly, like I'm pushing something heavy and I'm gonna bring it as far as I can go. And you try that at home too. So bringing it back like you're getting pushed from this direction, and then you're gonna slowly bring it to this, towards the left side, and then back. All right, and again, do the other side, the same thing. Bring it out 90 degrees, and then with your palm open, let's bring it to the right side and as you do it try to hold it for a second or two then bring it back slowly like you're resisting the movement mentally you're resisting the movement like it's a resistance band you can do it even in your mind i can actually feel something in the middle of my palm when i'm doing this movement And you can coordinate with your breathing. Inhaling when you bring out. Exhaling when you bring it in. Okay, so we have done flexion. Now we can take this arm and maybe move it back. We can bring it as much as we can back. And it will also help your chest muscles. So. I can bring it all the way here because I have a lot more mobility in my right arm than my left arm, but you can bring it as far as back as you can. And if you cannot do this movement without pain, don't do it, but you do need attention because this is an important part of taking a shower and putting soap on the back of your body. So if you are not able to do this, you have a right shoulder problem. Okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the left arm and my left shoulder is better today than it has been for a while. I've been working on it to improve the strength and mobility of my left shoulder. That's always been my weaker side. And I'm gonna breathe while my shoulders is um, in this fashion, in this extended fashion. And now I'm gonna bring it back out and then I'm going to take both my hands and bring it back. And I have, I'm going to go sideways so you can see my two palms are joined in the center of my back, my lower back. I can move them 
meaning up is a one. Do as much or as little as you can. This is going to exercise both shoulders at the same time, improve your extension and flexibility of your shoulders, improve your intercostal muscles because you're going to open up your chest while you do this motion. And then slowly untangle yourself and bring your hands forward. And to counter that move, we are going to crisscross applesauce our fingers and then move it up as far back as you can and as high as you can reach without pain. Again, if you are having pain, you have a shoulder joint problem, so you need attention. So I'm just gonna move up and down. Inhaling as I go up, exhaling as I bring it down. I see lots of people exercising with me, which is great. All right, so we feel good in our shoulders now. One more movement. We're going to use our left hand and we're going to stretch in with our elbows flexed. We can get it much further then we have our elbows flexed a little rather than when it's straight. You can do straight as well. Different muscles get exercised with different movements. That's why you have to have your mind connected to your body so that you do it correctly, safely, and without injury to yourself. Most of the injuries that happen, uh, we blame it on other things, but it is ourselves not being present at that time. And we're gonna do the same thing with our left shoulder. We're going to hold our arm with our right hand. And in the same time, your posture shouldn't be compromised in any way. Always like do a body check while you're doing it, trying to bring your left shoulder down as you move, do this movement and feeling the stretch and feeling good. Okay, so in this way, we have now mobilized our shoulder in many different directions. And you can see how much we are able to move. We are able to move up, down, and then below, extension, flexion. And one last thing is triceps, one of the weakest muscles in our shoulder joint and our body really. And we don't use it enough. So we are going to use our right hand to stretch our triceps. And you can keep your palms facing your body, your right hand, and then always resist movements and you will get more stretch. And breathe. And smile. Smiling is so inexpensive and so good for you. It's free. And even behind the mask, when you smile, the eyes brighten. So you get eye brightening without medication, makeup or anything, just by smiling. So always smile as much as you can. Releases really good hormones in your brain called endorphins. All right. You know that I'm an endocrinologist, so I always combine all my knowledge in what I'm trying to teach you all, both about musculoskeletal system as an acupuncturist, and then as an endocrinologist, all the good things that happen in our brains and bodies that we can take advantage of. All right, so now we are going to uh, exercise our um, mid back, and we're gonna use our hand and the chair I'm going to take the blocks off because now I feel more stretched out than I did before. And that changes. That's why I like blocks because when I start off, I'm more, more stiff. But as time goes on, I get more flexibility, almost maybe like a few millimeters every time I exercise. So I'm going to use these two hands and then I'm going to, you know, look down and I'm going to bring my belly in and just 
make my a spine like a C. And then I'm going to inhale and make my spine in the opposite direction. Then C spine, and they say cat and cow. Cat, cat does this, and then cow does that. So cat, cow, in yoga they call it. Then breathe out, breathe in, open your chest. This is the only time I'm telling you that you can bring your shoulder like a C. Try to avoid this movement usually, but this is helpful for the spinal exercise to do this cat cow. It's going to be very helpful for you. And if you can get on your knees and hands and do the spine or on your hands and knees, it's another movement that can be very, very relaxing. And when you're doing it this way, you can either do it this way or you can do it this way or this way. You can fold your hands in different direction, even this way. This is going to improve mobility of your wrist joint. So on the chair, I can just show you one way so we don't do this. And if you do it a little faster, you're going to get heated. You'll get heat in your body like aerobic exercise just by breathing in and out, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out, doing cats and cows. And you can do it slowly. And you can change it up. You can, you can breathe in when you are C-shaped. And you can breathe out. So you can change it up. But just be mindful as you are doing it. Sometimes I have to just close my eyes when I'm doing this so that I can really focus on my breath movement. So in this way, you have woken up your mid back a lot in your, your chest muscles and um, has a lot of small intercostal muscles. And these are very important for people who have breathing problems or who are scrunched down all the time on the computer all the muscles get shortened and we cannot get a deep breath into our lungs. And if we don't get deep breath, our lungs, which are many lobes, the lower lobes, they collapse, okay? And when they collapse and you get an infection like COVID or flu or whatever, that part is called, gets infected more easily, okay? Because there's a lot of fluid and things sitting there. So, you know, anything that has fluid just sitting there and stagnant, you know, things grow in it. Just like if you have water that's stagnant, a lot of mosquitoes grow in it. So the same way for our body. If we keep it open and the air exchange is happening well, then you won't have collapsed lungs. So that's why good posture is very important for lung volume and to prevent us from having infections. So it's not just about musculoskeletal system. Your internal organs are also benefited when you breathe well, you have more oxygen, and then you, you know, all your cells need oxygen. So you oxygenate the body well, okay? And when we have oxygen, we can have better respiration for all our little cells that need oxygen to have their cellular processing. Okay, so now moving on to the belly. Now, how to do the core exercises? Okay, on the, on the chair, it is hard, like I have said previously, because that's why our cores are weak, because we keep sitting on chairs. If we were moving around or we were on our backs, you could do the core exercises better. But there are some things that you can do from the chair as well. One is to bring your feet together and then raise it up. Okay, and then you can bring it down. You can bring it up and raise it down. Now, when we do yoga, I can even pick myself up from the chair using my arms and that really engages my core. I'm not suggesting that you do that. I don't want you to fall off the chair, but if you really want, you can do this or I use the blocks to pull myself up. And when I get my booty up, I also engage my abdominal muscles. So do this movement 
Breathing out when you bring it up and breathing in when you bring it down. Breathing out when you bring it up and breathing in when you bring it down. This is going to engage your core. And when we sit on the ground and we do this, this is called a boat pose. You look like a little boat to me. All right, do this and it'll help your core muscles a lot. We can also engage our external obliques, which are also part of the core. And we can do it in this fashion. We bring both our hands up and then we twist to the right and bring our arms down and then we breathe. Let's take two breaths, then bring our arms up and then bring it back to the center and do the same thing on the other side. Holding, using your eyes to look at your left shoulder and taking two breaths in this position. Then bringing it up and down. Let's do it one more time. Bring it up, turn to the right. Take a deep breath, let it out. Bringing it down. Looking to the left shoulder. In this way, we have now exercised all these body parts except our feet. Okay, so let's do something for our feet. We've done one thing. We can do dorsiflexion and flexion of our feet. So keeping your ankle joints, you know, mobile, it's important to do this exercise. Okay, pointy toes and then flex back up. Pointy toes, flex back up. Pointy, flex pointy flex and then you can do this a little movement bringing your ankles in this direction and then eversion inversion eversion inversion eversion i hope my feet are not too bad looking i haven't done pedicure since the pandemic too much sharing probably but I try to scrub my feet myself. Okay, so in this fashion, you've woken up all your body parts from your head down to your toes. And that's what you should try to do. Take a body inventory by doing the, um, you know, asanas or yoga moves uh, and try every day to spend one minute on your breathing at least. One minute out of so many minutes in a day you can spend on just getting all that stuck up breath out with three deep breaths okay that's my um, pointer for the day thank you so much and I hope I can field some questions that you may have